Good day everybody, it's Corey again here with some PHP Runner tips and tricks. Today we will continue to explore the page designer only to be found in PHP Runner version 10 or later. You can insert a button into a data table to make it apply to each data record on a web page. So I'm going to show you how to add a custom button into the grid of any list page. We will then take a few moments to customize the button and to finish it off I'm going to show you how you can hide or show the new button according to a certain condition. So there's a lot to explore but before we begin thank you very much Xline Soft for this amazing piece of software. Please go and visit their website and obtain your copy if you haven't done so already. As you can see professional web applications with little or no coding and that makes all the difference. So I'm going to show you what I have right now. It's a simple application with two list pages. The first list page contains products that's currently in stock and the second one has products that's currently out of stock. So we are going to add a button to both these list pages that will simply move the corresponding record to the other view. In other words, if a record is out of stock, you will be able to put it back into stock. And if a product is in stock, you will be able to move it out of stock. So I'm going to open up PHP Runner. We are already in the page designer and the list page of the in stock view is currently in focus. Now in page designer, the grid view of the list page is by default set to basic view. And in order for us to add a button to the grid, you will have to switch to advanced grid. And you will do so by clicking on switch to advanced grid button over here. So now I'm going to select the cell in the last column where the data is going to appear. With that selected, I will go to this button insert, custom button and click on new button. And I named my button out of stock. Already at this point, you have access to client before, server and client after events. In here, you will use row data and button objects to program buttons inserted into a grid. Also very important, a button inserted into a data grid will only work properly if you select a key field for the table on the choose page screen. But this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. More detail can be found in my tutorial titled Exploring Button Events. Please go and check it out. Okay, for now I'm just going to click OK. And there you will see the button is created. Now I'm also going to add a button in the out of stock view. So I'm going to select that view. I'm going to switch to advanced grid just like before. But this time I want to do something different. I want the button to appear in his own separate column. To do so, I'm just going to select the last cell again. And in my insert view, I'm going to ask it to add a column after. Now you will see that I have a column that's simply empty. I repeated step 3 and 4 to create a button, but the button is not in the grid. As you can see, the button is right here. That was done on purpose. I just want to show you if something like this happened, you don't have to go and delete the button now and recreate it. You can simply click on it and drag it where it's supposed to be. Okay, so now I just want to demonstrate. Let's for instance say that this button is the wrong button, you don't want it here and you need to delete it. So you can click on the button and on the right hand side of the screen there is now a remove option right here. So I'm going to click on remove. Now if I want to add that button again I don't have to recreate it completely from scratch. If you go to insert custom button 
On the bottom here, all buttons previously created in this project will appear right here. And you can simply just select the button that you want to add. So you can add this in stock button anywhere on any other page without recreating the same button. The second thing I want to draw your attention to is the edit button code over here. If you are ready to do some coding, you can click on this blue edit button code and it will open up again the client before server and client after events. Okay, so now I'm going to change the appearance or customize the button quickly. I'm going to make sure that it is actually selected or in focus. Personally, I prefer an extra small button. My button style, in this case, I want to select success. That will change it to a green button with white text on it. And I'm going to add an icon to it. There is plenty more parameters that you can go and play around with. The button on the in stock view has been customized by using the exact same steps. Now this is a very useful functionality of the page designer to quickly and effectively customize the button according to your needs. I think it's awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do next now is to code my buttons. To do that, I'm going to jump straight to my events page. I'm going to open up my custom buttons. Here you will see I have both buttons, the in stock and the out of stock. Like I've mentioned before, I'm not going to explain what I'm doing here as this is out of scope for this tutorial. But I will flash through the different views for those of you who wants to pause and just quickly peek of what I'm doing right here. This is my server event and that's the client after event. Okay, so I'm going to publish this page now and quickly see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to refresh the page and you will see there's my buttons. This out of stock button is sitting in my in stock view and this button also shared the same cell. And my out of stock view, and this is what I prefer doing, is adding a column for the button on its own. And in my opinion, this just looks a lot better. Let's see if it works. So we are in stock. We're going to move record 10, for instance, and say this is now out of stock. And you will see it has disappeared. Move 12 as well. Go to out of stock. There is 10 and there is 12. Let's move record 1 back into stock. It disappeared over here and now record 1 is back in stock. Okay, so that was nice and easy. Let me quickly show you how you would hide those buttons according, let's say, a user that signs on. So if the user is a manager, we want to show the button. And if the user is not a manager, anything else, we want to hide the button. Quickly jump back to PHP Runner. Gonna go to my designer page again. And this time I'm gonna select the buttons that I wanna show or hide. And then I wanna draw your attention to this item ID. At the end here, right almost on the edge of the screen, you will see a little question mark. You click that. This is all the PHP code events that you will use to hide or to show the button. I know I'm just going to use this now and I'm going to select it like that and I control C to copy it. And then I'm going to jump over to my events page. Then I'm going to select before display event and put the following code. Do the exact same for the out of stock page. I'm going to jump to the before display page and I'm going to put this piece of code there. Okay, I'm going to publish this again. This time we will have to sign on as user one. I think user one is a manager. And you will see the buttons is available. The logout. 
sign on as user2. And since user2 is not a manager, there is actually no buttons available. Okay, hopefully this was helping somebody. Anything unclear, please let me know. I will try and explain. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Goodbye.